Hi, welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to model a bicycle wheel using Blender 2.9. So this is an update to a previous video that I've done in 2018. So due to uh, popular requests, I'm now going to redo this uh, tutorial in Blender 2.9. So let's get started. Okay, first we, we start a new scene and we're going to get rid of the original cube and we're going to create a cylinder. Okay, press shift A and then create a cylinder. And under the add cylinder properties, you want to reduce the number of sides to eight because the eventual spoke is going to be very small anyway. So we are not going to uh, need so many details. So with the cylinder created, you want to go to edit mode. So select the cylinder, press tab to go to edit mode. And then uh, we want to extrude to form the uh, the rivet head. So press number three on your top number keyboard rows to select the face selection mode, or you can choose any of these buttons. One is vertice, two is edge, and three is face. So go and click on the top face and press E to extrude. Right. So once you've extruded, you can extrude. Uh, you can see the the sides of faces. A new sides of faces are now created. So now we want to select this ring of faces or the face loop and extrude out to form the rivet head. So holding down to the Alt key and left mouse click, you can now select the e face loop. Now if you select the wrong edge, you will go down this way instead. So make sure you're at the correct edge location when you place your cursor, okay, right about here. Then Alt left mouse click to select the uh, face loop. Next, you want to extrude outwards to form the rivet head. Now you can use the extrude option here, but I prefer to use Alt E and then extrude along normals, extrude faces along normals. So as I move my cursor upwards, you can now see the rivet head is now being formed. Next, you want to also form the, uh, the bottom of the spoke, the main spoke body. So I'm going to select the bottom face. Then I'm just going to press G followed by Z just to extend the length a little bit longer. Now I'm going to change my view to the front view. I'm going to press uh, the tilde key, which is the uh, wavy button next to the uh, your top number row in your keyboard. So click, press it, press it, and then you will have this pie menu. Then I can choose the uh, front view, All right, like so. And then while the face is still being selected, I can just press G followed by Z. And then if you hold down the control, you can actually snap it along the grid the grid uh, grid slots here. So I'm going to just maybe extrude right about here. I think that's good enough for me. And next, I want to position the cursor at the corner here so that I can extrude out the bend of the spoke. So holding down to your shift key, right mouse click on the corner here to position the cursor here. Then press shift S to bring up the snap menu and choose the option cursor to grid. This will position it more precisely at the crosshairs here. Next, we want to extrude out the bend. So you can use the spin tool. Okay, I find the spin tool uh, is a bit tricky to use. Uh, I prefer to use this method, Alt E, and then choose spin instead. And then we're going to uh, have it extrude out 90 degrees. But instead of extruding this way, I'm going to extrude it negative 90 degrees. So you can click on the numbers here and type minus 90 degrees. And we don't really need so many segments here because after all this is a very small object. Uh, we are going to reduce it down to maybe four segments. So we have a nice band like that. So with the faces still selected, you can press uh, E to extrude and then you can extrude the rest of the spoke. So you can extrude it. Okay, and then when you release, right, you will have to press G followed by X to continue to move the selected face outwards. So now we have a single spoke created. Okay, we can set it aside and then uh, bring in our image reference. So remember, this is uh, one spoke for the top lacing, all right? So the wheel that we're gonna be creating will be a 32 spoke wheel. So first we need to create another spoke so that it is actually pointing downwards instead. So right now I noticed that the uh, I need a little bit more of the the body for the spoke. So I'm going to go to 
edit mode then press 1 and right now I'm in shaded mode okay so I want to go into x-ray mode so that I can select the vertices behind so press alt Z to go to x-ray mode then you can drag and select these uh, vertices and then press G followed by Z and then just gonna increase the height a little bit you can hold down the control again to snap it to the grid right and I think uh, this book looks about right I'm gonna rename this book I'm gonna call it spoke in the outliner just double click on the cylinder name and then type spoke underscore zero two sorry zero one okay and then we have a single spoke created next we want to duplicate another spoke uh, so that uh, this spoke right will form the underside of the uh, the tires okay so now before we do that um, we just gonna focus on this spoke first so G followed by X I'm gonna move it aside all right and then I'm gonna reset the position on my cursor so press shift C so bring it back to the original location and I'm gonna use my number pad uh, on my keyboard to change the view okay press 7 in my number pad and then now on a, I want to bring in the image reference so press shift A create an empty with an image okay and then for the empty image uh, the size I'm gonna increase it to maybe uh, 100 units and then I'm gonna bring in the image by clicking here open and then I'm gonna to go to the folder containing my image reference so I found this image reference on the internet and uh, it is it's not very sharp but I think it is uh, it provides enough detail for me to create the uh, uh, the the bicycle spoke lacing so now you notice that it is not precisely lined up with the center so I need to adjust the offset you can zoom in closer and then adjust the offset you can hold on to the shift key to adjust until you get a fine adjustment to the center and right now the image is uh, very opaque you want to turn on transparency and bring down the opacity a little bit and you notice one the spokes are not really lined up with the uh, with our grid grid system so with the empty selected you press R to rotate until the spokes okay you can see two of the spokes here now line up okay with the uh, image reference okay so once that is done we can uh, move this image reference down all right, I'm going to go to the side view or front view. I'm going to press G followed by Z to bring the image reference down. And then that's where I'm going to lock the image reference. I'm going to click on this filter but button here and then turn on selection option and then disable the selection. So I will not accidentally select and move the reference. So now go to the top view again. I'm going to press 7 in my number pad. I'm going to select my cylinder. Press G followed by X since I'm moving it along the X axis. And then I'm going to scale it down. Just press S to scale it down until it is about the size of the reference here. Okay, and then position it roughly around the position of the reference. Okay, so with that done, the next thing I want to do is to create a. All right, create an empty so that I can create uh, duplicates of this around here. So I want to create another tab empty. Shift A. I want to create a empty uh, just a plain axis empty will do and let's see how big this empty is okay to help me see both the orthographic view and the perspective view I'm gonna split my view into two right mouse click just move your cursor here right mouse click and vertical split so this view here I'm just gonna reposition it so I can see my empty here and then my uh, bicycle spoke over here I'm gonna press alt Z so that I can turn off the x-ray so I can see a little bit clearer so I'm gonna apply the array modifier onto my spoke so go over and apply an array modifier and we're gonna create eight spokes okay and I'm gonna use reduce the factor to zero relative offset and then I'm gonna use a object offset and in this case I'm gonna use my second empty just click here on the empty box and choose the second empty as my reference okay you notice something when I uh, choose the empty suddenly the size of the spoke jumps up 
the reason is because we need to do another step to prevent this from happening so let me just uh, temporarily disable object offset you need to apply uh, the scale okay we need to apply the scale of the spoke so that the pivot point also jumps to the origin so with the spoke selected uh, applying the scale um, is also similar to Maya's of uh, freezing the scale so press ctrl a to apply and then I want to choose all transforms so right now everything has been reset to one and also um, the pivot point has been shifted to the center so now with the object selected I'm going to turn on my object offset again and this time you should see nothing happening okay be all the eight all the eight copies should be stacked on top of this uh, uh, original piece here next you want to select the empty and then you want to rotate now watch what happens when I rotate the empty in the Z axis so if I in this case right now I'm looking at the top axis down which is a Z axis if I press R and rotate I'm actually rotating at the Z axis so you can see the spokes are being created as I rotate so when I rotate I want to rotate about 45 degrees because uh, that will evenly distribute all the eight spokes around the circle like that so now I have created the spokes that are looking uh, what do you call it uh, that are pointing upwards okay next I want to extend the spokes a little bit so that it follows the length of the bicycle wheel so go ahead and select the original spoke and then go to edit mode by pressing tab then select the end vertices then just press G followed by X then bring it all the way until it touches the rim okay because at the end of the rim you will notice that there is a bolt in order to tighten the spoke so I'm going to create that bolt onto the spoke so I'm going to insert an edge loop control R insert an edge loop and slide it down until it sticks out slightly like so okay maybe you can see it better in 3d view like that then I'm gonna select the faces that runs around here right now I'm in vertex mode so press uh, 3 to go to face selection mode hold down to your alt key and then left mouse click to select the loop around the faces then I'm gonna press alt E and then extrude faces along normals to just create that bolt over there okay so now I've we created our first set of uh, of spokes now we want to create the other set of spokes that is in reverse okay so how do we do that very simple just go to the front view and we are going to select the spoke and the empty both at the same time then we're gonna press shift D to duplicate right when you press shift D and you move your cursor you will follow the cursor now we want this to snap back so you just right mouse click so the duplicate now snaps back and you notice on your outliner we have two sets of duplicates now then or rather we have the extra set of uh, spokes now next thing you want to do is you want to rotate so press R and then press 180 degrees in your front view all right so now we have another set of spokes that is rotated 180 degrees now we want to go back to our top view and with everything still selected we want to rotate it so that they offset or rotate about let's see how many degrees here uh, maybe about 20 20 degrees okay rotate 20 degrees so that they are about they are distributed evenly well actually now now that I look at it is still a little bit off I think a, maybe add a, a couple more degrees 22 degrees okay you can eyeball this okay so now our uh, spokes are kind of evenly distributed but you not, notice that the lacing pattern is still not matching Okay, so that's where we are going to uh, do some changes to the original spoke so you can take the original spoke set then go and grab the vertices go in, in edit mode okay press tab then go and grab the vertices at the end go to press one and select the vertices at the end and then you can start to move the vertices until it matches the lacing pattern but if you do that Okay, let's see what happens. You're going to distort the shape of your spoke. So a better alternative would actually be to rotate the entire spoke. But if I were to rotate the entire spoke, what happens? If I press A and rotate, 
uh, it gets distorted in this weird manner. So there's a trick around that. We want to shift the cursor here and we want to use the cursor as the rotation pivot point. So I'm going to go to face selection mode and select the top face here. Press Shift S cursor to selection. And then we're going to enable rotate along the 3D cursor over here. And then this time we can select all the spokes and then we can rotate. And now it will rotate nicely according to the lacing pattern. So I'm going to follow the reference uh, of what I see over here. And then the next wheel on the next spoke, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to select the next spoke, next spoke set. And then I'm going to change the position of my uh, cursor point. For this, I need to go to the bottom here. I go to edit point, uh, edit mode, then face selection mode. Okay, I need to go to the original. Where's the original spoke? Which is this one? Yeah. So select the original face, which is the bottom face here. Then shift S cursor to select it. Then go back to my top view again. Okay, and then select all the all the faces okay and then you start to rotate to form the lacing okay for this lacing we can go the other way maybe this one like so okay so you can see it's now lined up with the reference okay so now we have one set of uh, one side of the bicycle laced up. So now what we need to do is just to duplicate and then uh, flip it around. So the, the, the key here is for the lacing to work, uh, you have to evenly distribute one side first like this. So let's go and check and double confirm that we did it correctly first. I need to select the other set here. Just rotate, make sure that they are correct. And then the other set. Okay, this one is correct already. So now uh, I think the, the lacing for this, this two is, is done properly. Next, we want to select the ends of the, uh, of the spokes and then move it down. So drag a box and select the faces at the end of the spoke. And then you just press G followed by Z and then move it down. Okay, for this method, you'll notice that the, the spoke will be slightly distorted. So you need to change your view, like to the side view and then manually rotate this. I need to go change to global. This is correct. And then just manually rotate it until it is lined up with the spoke like that. Now we do it to the other spoke, select the other spoke, select all the faces at the end, press G followed by Z until they form the same angle. And the same thing, we just want to rotate it until they roughly form the same angle, like so. Okay. So now if I go to perspective view, now we have one set of the spokes created for one side. All right, so you can see now we have one set of the spokes created. Next, we want to select all these duplicates, select these two sets of spokes, duplicate them and then flip them to the other side. So very simple, just go to the side view make, to make selection a little bit easier. I'm going to hide my camera and my light for now so I will not accidentally select them. So make sure you're in object mode and then just drag and select both these sets. Then press Shift D, then press Z to bring them downwards then press R, press 180 degrees, press G followed by Z and then bring it down until you have the tips right all line up with the spokes. Now go over to your top view by pressing 7 and then press R to rotate until they are evenly spaced. Again using the reference, you can use the reference to try to line it up. Okay. And then now, with both of the two spokes created, you can temporarily hide your uh, hide your reference, and then you can see the lacing looks pretty good. 
all right all the spokes are lined up pretty all right okay so maybe the spokes needs to be a bit adjusted a little bit okay you have to go individually you want to make sure that these uh actually they look pretty okay all right they are quite perpendicular to the rim of the tires so i'm gonna leave it at that all right so the next thing is you want to create the hub okay so how do you go about doing that so the hub is just essentially a cylinder so i'm going to uh, create a cylinder shift a and go ahead and create a cylinder make sure you're in the object mode okay shift c press shift c to bring the cursor back uh, to the center shift a to create a cylinder this time we want a, a 32 side cylinder and then we're going to increase the radius until it covers uh, all the vertices or rather all the spokes and then i'm going to move this cylinder this flat cylinder downwards slightly okay i'm going to scale it down s followed by shift z okay maybe i just want to create the center hub first then um, i'm going to split this cylinder in edit mode uh, control R insert the edge loop to split into half so in edit mode I'm going to select the center face and then I'm going to uh, press G followed by Z to bring it up first right about here if I go to the front view you can see that now it is lined up to the top part of the vertice uh, uh, the rivets, rivet head of the spokes Okay, and then I'm going to press Ctrl R and then insert one more edge loop just, if you look closely, just below the bottom part of the rivet head. So now I have these uh, row of faces that I can extrude out to form the hub. Okay, so go into face selection mode and then select this edge loop, press Alt E, extrude faces along normals and then just extrude outwards until we overlap the wheels like that okay so I can reduce the thickness a little bit more um, so I'm going to select this face I'm going to show you a trick how to increase selection control number pad plus number pad plus number pad plus okay so what I'm doing is I'm selecting okay I'm going to show you one more time select the central face control number pad plus 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 control number pad plus a few times so only these faces are selected because I want to scale them down in the Z axis like so because you can see some of the spokes are cutting into this okay you can cut a little bit but not not so much and I think I can move GZ move this group of faces down a little bit more and then we have this piece done for this section here now I'm gonna select the central face extrude it out uh, scale it up a little bit S to scale it up then press E to extrude inward slightly then press S to scale it in just to create this hub pattern here okay so I'm gonna duplicate the uh, the other side so I'm gonna use my um, mirror tool so to mirror this I'm gonna apply a mirror modifier now before I do that I want to get rid of these bottom faces so select the bottom face control number pad plus then press X delete away the faces and then I'm gonna apply a mirror but I'm gonna mirror along the um, the Z axis all right so now I have the other set created okay you notice that it's not long enough so that's not a problem we have to just uh, extend okay apply the mirror first apply the mirror in object mode okay and then go to edit mode then go to Alt Z to go to uh, X-ray mode. Then go to vertex mode and select all the vertices here. Go to the side view. Press G followed by Z and then just bring it down until you line up with the bottom side here. Okay, so now we have that hub done. We want to create the rim of the tires. So there are many ways you can do that. But the fastest and easiest way okay, would be to create a, a donut or a torus so now i want to center the pivot of this object first so right mouse click go to set origin origin to geometry now the pivot point is here then shift s cursor to selected so now the cursor is here so whatever i create uh it will be based on the cursor location all right 
So Shift A, go ahead and create a torus. And then we're going to increase the number of segments. Okay, 48 is fine, but I'm going to increase the radius. Make it a little bit bigger. And then the size, the minor radius. and Just make it a little bit bigger until you get the, uh, the shape of the tire. Okay, and then maybe adjust the radius a little bit. Some more. I'm going to go to the top view. And then adjust the major radius until it just sticks out from the wheel like that. Okay, so you can see uh, from this we can create the rim. Okay, so I'm going to call this the rim. This is not the tire. This will be the rim, tire rim. And then I'm going to go to edit mode and I'm going to delete away the faces uh, starting from go to face selection mode and then I'm just going to use the uh, I'm going to use the edge selection tool go to 2 to go to edge selection tool Alt A to deselect I'm going to select the central edge of this uh, torus then I'm going to use the increase selection tool control number pad plus gradually increase until I get roughly to what I, where I think the uh, rim is going to be all right and then uh, I'm going to apply a uh, a scale okay I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone I'm gonna create both the tie and rim at the same time so I'm gonna scale it along the z-axis just now before I do that I need to separate it separate these pieces so to separate them you just press P and then you can say uh, separate by selection so right now I have the rim uh, created, separated from the torus. Then I'm going to press S followed by Z to scale it up ever so slightly. Okay. And then with, uh, with this separated now, I can right mouse click and then I can shade it smooth. And also I can apply a solidify modifier. So when you apply a solidify, you sort of give it a, a thickness. You can see the thickness right about there now. So you can adjust the thickness if you want. You can make it thicker or not so thick. And you have to give it rough, rough thickness like that. Then as for the tire, okay, I will rename this. I'll call this the tire now. And then I'll call this tire rim. I'm also going to shade this smooth. And I'm going to sort of like inflate the tire a little bit so it uh, it covers the gap of this rim. So I'll go to edit mode. I'm going to select the inner edges by uh, pressing Alt, left mouse click, and then bottom one as well. Alt, Shift, and left mouse click. If you go to um, wireframe mode, you can see a little bit clearly. You want to select the rims of this tire like so. So I'm just going to scale them inwards so that it goes inside the tire. And then I'm going to uh, shift control uh, I to go to uh, invert select. Okay, let me just undo that a bit because I do not want to select the edges like that. Let me undo that. I want to change it to uh, face section. No, let's go back to edge again. Okay, if you mess up, you can press control Z. And on second thought, I think, uh, yeah, I think I will, I will press, if you press Control i you are inverse selecting the uh, edges. So I inverse select, the reason is because I want to sort of like scale this outwards a little bit in the z-axis. So I'm going to scale it uni uh, uniformly a little bit first. Okay, but it's actually pulling along the edge here, which is not what I want. Okay, so actually I wanted to select these faces here, not not these one over here. So I'm going to use another method. I'm going to select uh, the ring loop around here, then press Control Number Pad Plus, Control Number Pad Plus. Yeah, this is the group that I want to select. So I I wanted to scale them up ever so slightly, then scale them along the Z axis so that I can inflate the tire ever so slightly. So now if I go to shaded mode. You can see now that my my tires right have covered up the rims okay so your tire is uh, more or less done so you can now apply some uh, shading to it i'm gonna go and create 
some uh, metallic look to it okay so let's give it some uh, metallic shine and then maybe I'll apply a sort of uh, brown material to it okay let's go to shading and see what it looks like okay the quickest way right uh, would be if you enable a, a material library and then you can pick uh, materials and then you can apply it straight away here so right now I'm just gonna create some metallic materials and then reduce the roughness just a preview of what it will look like okay so for the rest of these objects I will apply the same material that, that I've created as well for the spokes okay right now you notice that if I want to apply the material I have to do it one by one okay, which is kind of uh, troublesome so there is actually a plugin in blender you can enable the add-on right so if you go to add-on and you type material there's this thing called the material utilities you can also turn on material library which you can actually bring in a pre-loaded set of uh, materials so with the utilities uh, done you can shift select multiple objects then you can right mouse click material to utilities assigned by material and then just apply the material okay okay then th there's a, another cool uh, add-on uh, which you can download and install for free I might as well show you guys now which is the uh, PBR materials uh, did I install this one okay no so I did not install it here so let me just install it uh, let me just go to look for my plugins there is a PBR master which you can download okay PBR uh, materials master or PBR materials I will install this add-on and enable it Okay, just google for this this is a free add-on you can download and install and you give you a lot of uh, metallic uh, pbr materials and uh, non-metallic materials so i think this is a much better option for me if i want to apply uh, metallic materials or non-metallic materials so i'm going to go to metal and i'm going to choose a nice um, shiny material like aluminum okay so now every everything is nice and shiny and then for the tire here I'm gonna use a dielectric and then maybe use a carbon or rubber okay they have rubber setting so there you go so you you have a nice looking tire uh, created using blender 2.9 so I hope this uh, video tutorial is helpful okay so if I'm going a bit fast okay you can just uh, slow down or rewind and then watch how I do everything again now if uh, your object looks a bit like faceted, you can just right mouse click and then apply a shade smooth, uh, which is what I'm, go I'm going to do right now. I'm going to apply a shade smooth to all the objects. So including this rim here. So if you apply a shade smooth and it starts to look like this, you can go over to the object properties uh, under normals and then turn, it, uh, turn on the auto smooth. So you fix some of the problems here. Now you can also adjust the angle so that you only apply uh, the smooth right to the really really curved areas. So you get this uh, detail to pop out. Okay, so this is basically the uh, bicycle tire tutorial. Let me just save this file first. I'll call this uh, tire tutorial, and then. I can show you what you can do with this uh, with what you can do so this is a bicycle model that I'm working on okay still work in progress so the tires you can see are created using this method so I hope this uh, tutorial is helpful to everyone um, and if you like it give it a thumbs up and uh, if you like my channel just uh, subscribe and then I'll come up with more video tutorials and thank you for watching